Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great Game Master. In the last episode we looked at the 121 or the 122 pacing principle and a lot of you guys asked me to elaborate a little bit more on that so that you can really maximize your game. So that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to look at pacing, we're going to look at how to introduce a love interest, as well as how to change the direction of your campaign, uh, seemingly for the worse in terms of what the players are receiving, but ultimately for the better in terms of the whole story. So let's start at the very beginning. I was down at a uh, conference uh, over the weekend where we were being addressed by some of the leading animators from DreamWorks Animation on how they go about animating their three-dimensional characters. What does this have to do with telling a better story, you might ask? Very simple. The animators gave us a three-day lecture on their processes and principles, and two of those three days were spent on how they prepare to animate their character and the way that they prepare to animate every single character is by looking at the story. And I'm not meaning by looking at the script, no. They go beyond that. They go looking into the subtext of the character. They go looking into the backstory. So that when they're animating, they create a really vivid character. But what struck me was that here is an art form where effectively you are mimicking the positioning and the shaping of an object. And yet their focus was so much on story. And that to me just tells us that story, 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 whether you are animating uh, Kung Fu Panda 3 or whether you are telling the darkest tale from the middle of the Star Wars cantina, it doesn't matter. If your story is good, everything else kind of falls into place. So let's look at film story. Now, every single feature film that's ever been made, except for a few that have tried to break the mold, have followed the, followed, <laughs> have followed the following prescribed plan in terms of their story. It's a three act structure. In those three acts, each little section is broken down into two pieces, except for the middle act, which is a four piece long uh, narrative. In the first act, we have the introduction to the character and their life, and then we have the setting. So if you look at any kind of feature film, think of how we are introduced to the characters. Uh, let's take X-Men, for example. Slowly but surely, we're introduced to each character and their setting, where they are in the world and how they fit into the world. We're not introduced to the plot. We are only interested, uh, introduced to the plot once we have established this is our character, this is their setting. Then they have a turning point. It is a moment in their lives where they choose to make a decision that is irrevocable. That means once they've made this decision, their world will change forever. That might be the moment when, say, for example, um, Luke decides to join Obi-Wan Kenobi to leave Tatooine. Or it might be the point where um, I've gone blank. But you can think of any kind of feature film where the characters have been for the first 10 or 15 minutes of the movie on a certain path and then suddenly they make a decision to change it. It could also be that the villain suddenly blows up their world. But nonetheless, they make a decision to change it. So in D&D or in role playing, the decision to change is when the characters to decide to start going on the journey, on the adventure. They've taken the hook, finally. Then you move into Act 2. Act 2 is broken up into four pieces with a gigantic midpoint in the middle. Surprise, surprise. The first two parts of uh, feature film is what we call a subplot and then a love theme. Now, the subplot, for our purposes, could very well be where you hand the characters, uh, you hand the players, different character sheets of minions of the boss, uh, of the big boss, uh, evil boss, uh, in the hopes that they will play a small cutaway scene, and in playing that small cutaway scene, they learn a little bit more about the bigger scheme of the world. And then they go back to story. The second part of that is the love theme. Now, there is a huge debate as to whether one should involve any kind of romance whatsoever in role playing. Some like it, some don't, some just never get there, and others feel really weird. 
Bottom line is that love does not necessarily need to just be between a man and a woman, or a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or a man and a woman and a man, or, or tentacles are involved somewhere. The point is that love could be between comrades. So if the PCs have been introduced to a really good NPC who's been helping them throughout the journey, this part could be where that NPC is sharing a little more information. Is this Dumbledore waxing lyrical about his youth? Is it Snape talking about his long lost love and his journey? Whatever the point, including a love section helps round out the NPCs and the characters experience quite dramatically. Of course, you could add in a love interest. I was running a module once at a convention of ours and I just happened to have the same player for three of the sets uh, that was run over the, over the weekend. And in the first set, I needed to introduce a villain, but I decided that just introducing him was too dull. So instead, I had the players come across a young female who had been abandoned by her evil warlord father. Of course, they didn't discover that he was the warlord until a little bit later, but by then, she and the paladin had fallen in love. Now, because I had the same player in all three sets, and it was a continuation module, so you played module one, module two, module three, I was able to explore that love interest all the way through. And the surprising thing is that, of course, the twist was that she was the evil warlord right at the end, and she betrayed the paladin, and the players were absolutely ecstatic because half of them had warned him against this woman, the other half had started to warm to this woman, and of course the player had decided that, well, his character might as well fall in love, she was beautiful, buxom, and available. Once she betrayed him, of course, everything became apparent, and all of the clues that I'd been dropping throughout all three sessions suddenly made sense, and everyone had an absolute blast. So the love interest can be used as a vehicle to introduce all kinds of really fun things. Alternatively, it becomes a wonderful plot hook. If one of the characters falls in love, you let them fall in love. Let them find that little cottage in the woods. Let them take over that little spaceport at the end of nowhere and have one or two adventures based around that. Then, of course, you kill them in a gruesome and horrible and pointless way so that the player then feels that he needs to avenge his long lost love. Then you can bring her back as a ghost later on, and you kind of get the point. Through introduction of a very small little line, you suddenly have an entire campaign. In the middle of the film, they have what is called a midpoint. And the midpoint is generally when the main character shifts from being the victim to being the hero. They go from running away from the bad guy and from accepting all of the bad guy's nonsense to suddenly deciding that they're going to turn and fight. Alternatively, if this is a boxing movie, I'm not mentioning any names, but if it's a boxing movie, this is the point where the character loses a fight that he should not have lost simply because he was overconfident and he now falls from grace and realizes that he can never ever win ever again. So the turning point or the midpoint in a feature film is literally a shift for the character. The character goes from victim to hero or from hero to victim and it is in the second half of the film that they then must redeem themselves or overcome whatever it is that they are now facing. The second half of a feature film starts up with the failure to execute. So in other words the heroes all rally together, they form a great plan and then they get defeated and that kind of rounds out the second half of the movie. So let me just go over that again. So they plan, they draw up their battle plans, they form their team, they gather their people, and then they fail. And they fail horribly. They fail as much as getting to a point where there does not seem to be any way for them to escape. They are in the deepest, darkest dungeon they possibly can be. This creates a huge amount of tension, and if you time it right and end your session at the point where the arch-villain arrives with his armada of spaceships to surround our heroes who have failed to plan correctly, that's a great cliffhanger to start your next episode on. Or, <laughs> I'm even calling it an episode. To start your next session in. What we then have is we move into the final act, and the final act is failure and then success. So the characters fail to overcome the villain, they rally, they try and escape, and then they get captured again. And then they try and escape again, 
Only this time they do it because it's the right thing to do rather than motivated by greed or whatever the case might be, and they succeed. The film structure is designed really just to entertain us, and if you look at it, there are about nine or ten segments in that breakdown, and if you put ten minutes per segment, you get a nice 95-minute feature film. The next time you watch a film from ooh, anywhere before the 2015s, you'll find that that is the structure that they follow, almost to the minute. Long-form films obviously change the structure a little bit, but that's the same idea. So now you know how feature films are written and on the structure that they are written by. But what does that have to do with the 1-2-1 or the 1-2-2 model? So the 1-2-1 model says that we have an introduction, we have a two-part middle, and then we have a conclusion. So if we take these two structures and we kind of bring them together, you get the sense that your one introduction stays the same. Introduce the characters, introduce the situation. The two part now refers to the middle part of, the, of, of your session. And most likely in a one to one situation, you're dropping the subplot and you're dropping the romance. This allows the characters to come up with a plan and then to try and overcome it, fail, get captured, and then go into the final section, which is act three, and then they just face the conclusion. That would be a one to one model. A one to two model is a little bit different insofar as you now have more time. You realize that your players are enjoying the campaign, they love the journey that their characters are going on, and they want more. So now what you do is you swap it around a little bit, you introduce a romantic theme or a bromance or some kind of tender sentimental moment that the characters can really connect with and that the players are going, oh, this is so nice, I don't want it to change. And then you rip it all away, of course, in the midpoint. So your one two, 2 model, you're not actually adding in another conclusion to the first conclusion. This is not Peter Jackson. What you are doing is you are fleshing out the middle bit. You're adding in romance. You're adding in a little bit of a subplot so that your story becomes a lot better and a lot more rounded. Players will often do their damnedest to derail this wonderful little story structure that you have. And what is important is that you remain flexible in how you apply it to your story. Don't become so obsessed that you have to get the characters to the love interest because they have to meet the love interest because of this and that and the next thing. Don't be so rigid. Don't focus so much on getting from point A to point B to point C. Yes, we have been speaking in many of these tutorials on you have this structure, you have this plan, someone wants something badly and they're having difficulty getting it, blah, 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 blah. Knowing how to tell a good story allows you to sit back and not plan the whole thing. It allows you to sit back and see what is in front of you, see what the players are doing, see what the characters are doing, and then decide to change and adapt. Perhaps now is the right time to move from the introduction to the middle part, or perhaps now is the right time to introduce a subplot. Maybe your story has kind of slowed down. Bang, let's go to subplot. Here are some new characters, play these quickly. Or time to go to subplot. Right, introduce the random element, which seems to have nothing to do with the main storyline, but has everything to do with the solution. The guys don't follow it, don't panic. It's the subplot. It's meant to kind of come back. And you can use it to come back when you get to, say, the planning phase. Suddenly that mysterious old woman who showed up asking for help at uh, the subplot stage and didn't get any because the players are bastards. Now she arrives halfway through the planning phase mysteriously. She's wandered across their path. And she says, oh, but I have some information. But first, you must help me. That's if you want to extend the campaign, if, uh, the, the, the adventure. If you want to shorten it up, she just gives them the information for free. So don't ever think that simply because you have tried to set up the love interest and no one has uh, bought into it, they've all kind of left the character standing on the altar alone, that you can't use them to bring them back. Remember, the players never know what your plan is. They are simply there for the ride. So know the story structure, understand how to tell a good story, and then you can use the elements as you like, cobbling together this amazing story that at the end of it, everybody sits back and goes, you are a great GM. No, you're not a great GM, you're a great storyteller. And you just happen to be able to apply a rule system to it. Now, guys, we have reached over a thousand subscribers. This is mind blank, mind blown. Thank you so very much. 
Um, we're looking to expand, obviously, because, well, it just means we can make more of these videos. I am trying to respond to all of you, and you've got some great questions coming in. Give me more. The more we have, the more we can work with. Um, check out our website. It is still very basic at the moment. Um, that is called greatgamemaster.com, and you'll find all the episodes there, hopefully, if our webmaster gets them up in time, plus a whole bunch of free stuff like character generators for a whole bunch of different systems. And you'll see that we are thinking about doing what I, I think is quite exciting because it's something that I'd like to watch, is we're thinking of bringing together a whole bunch of GMs and trying out different systems and then giving you our opinion on those systems in terms of how we think they operate and, and, and that kind of stuff. So that could be very exciting. Leave us your comments. I do read them, even if I don't respond to all of them. I really do enjoy them. And uh, let's push that subscriber base even higher and then I can, you know, uh, really just make more videos for you guys and... and uh, um, yeah, it's just been a great journey so far. So I thank you. Right, till next time. Like it, subscribe it, recommend it, flaunt it, shout it, share it, whatever it is you want to do with it. Just don't delete it. Uh, happy gaming.